My name is Kurt Buchanan and in this video I'm going to show you how to look at the results inside of LifeSim and how to export them into an Excel workbook as well as give you some tips on how to calibrate and check your model. So once all your simulations have been completed the easiest way to see your results is to right click on the simulation and select view results plots. This is going to bring up the box and whisker plots that we're used to seeing where we can see the life loss for each run along with its associated statistics. You can use the check boxes to filter and compare specific scenarios and you can switch the plot data to show damages and other results as well as filtering it by zones. The box and whisker tab shows results for different alternatives and it's kind of similar to the data you just saw in the other tab. The iterations tab allows you to see the results of each and every iteration. You can filter and you can also click on a specific iteration and generate detailed output and this will allow us to plot these scenarios in the maps tab. The Warning and Mobilization Uncertainty tab allows us to look at results. We can filter by alternatives. And we can even look at uh, just specific zones within that alternative. And we can change the parameters to show warning issuance, mobilization sensitivity, uh, and we can see how those different parameter samples impact the life loss in each EPZ. These are the plots that we typically copy into the CTS worksheet and the figures tab. So the detailed output results tab is for looking at road evacuation statistics which I haven't run in this model. The other tool we have for looking at results of multiple simulations is accessed not by clicking on the simulation name, but by clicking on the simulation's header itself. Right click on that and select simulation result plots. This takes a second to come up. This is going to give us another box and whisker plot, but this is going to be on a log scale by default. So we can see you can change it down here, clicking on log, logarithmic or not. So we click on the filter button up here to narrow down what it is that we're showing. For this plot, we'll uncheck the cities, we'll uncheck the 2 a.m. because our 2 p.m. daytime life loss is higher. Next we're going to uncheck the ample warning alternatives so that we can just show the minimal warning alternatives. Now we can also change the order so that we make sure that the non-fails are just underneath the fails for these scenarios. So this is going to be hard to see, but you click on change order and you can move your non-fails up. So that they're under their corresponding fail scenario. Next we'll use the plot properties tool to change the labeling. So we're going to click this drop down on general settings and move it to axis and then we'll click on labels. You can see down here at the bottom we can see our labels so what we can do is we can get rid of the simulation name and we can get rid of all this stuff 
So that'll make our plot labels look a lot cleaner. As you change them, you'll see them change in the window. So we've got all those changed. You could go in and remove the underscores if you wanted to make it look even cleaner. But this gives us a good plot that basically shows what we want to show for a minimal warning daytime scenario. So you can screenshot this plot right here and put this in a PowerPoint and in the CTS worksheet itself. So you can use that same process and do it with the ample warning scenarios instead of the minimal warning to make your ample warning whisker plot as well. So the final tool we're going to look at in LifeSim is the mapping tool. Now this is accessed by right clicking on the simulation name itself and clicking on view results maps. So this gives us a lot of options on what type of maps we can show and once we bring these into the LifeSim map window, you can also export them as shape files to use in ArcGIS or Arc Pro as well. So I'm going to click on, we can see I've got a detailed in the iterations tab of the plot uh, menu. I created a detailed output of iteration 428 on the Max I failed Minworn. Uh, so we can show that specific this is how you get your animation that shows the different structures moving. For right now, I'm going to click on the, I'm going to send the max high fail daytime structure to the map window. And I'm also going to go to the, uh, I'm going to send the normal high non-fail daytime because that shouldn't have any damages. So I want to see what that looks like. So this will send them to the map window by default. It's going to show us uh, a heat map of the life loss or of the damage if there is no life loss as in the case of the normal high. So what I want to do to calibrate is go to the properties to change the symbology. And I'm going to select this as max depth. So I want to be able to plot the max depth and what I'm going to do is change this so it doesn't actually show these ones that are less than one foot. And I'm going to change this to point oh one. So now I should be able to see anything and actually I'm going to change this first okay so now anything that's getting a depth should have a big red circle under it so now I can look at this and I can see which structures are actually getting flooded in that normal high non-fail I can zoom in and look I can see these are a little bit too close to the river in a spot where they shouldn't be. So I can right click on the inventory, click on edit, use the select button, and I can move this structure out or right click and delete it. So I'm just going to delete it. And do the same with that. Alternatively, you could move the structure if the location is off. So we'll look at another one down here. We'll see there's houses along the river, so this one might actually be there. It's just a little bit too close, or the hydraulics are a little bit off. So for that one, I might just move it a little bit. So you're going to go through your whole inventory and kind of look at it like this. We're going to hit save edits. Stop editing. And now we can go in and rerun our simulations uh, 
to get those updated results. Okay, so now I'm going to quickly show you guys how to get the results from LifeSim into the Excel toolbox that the MMC uses. So we can see this is a toolbox. It's got an instructions tab. We usually type our project name in here. We can say how many iterations it had. And then in this column right here, we're going to make sure that we have all the scenario names we need. So if you add custom scenarios with different names, you can change them here and add them. That's fine. Now we can see there's, there's instructions step by step. Our next thing we're going to do is actually copy our results into the LifeSim output tab from LifeSim. So the way we do that is click on the simulation name. We go to view results tables. Now once this loads, we're going to click on these gray boxes in the upper right corner. And we'll right click and say copy. We don't want the headers because they're already in the toolbox. Bring up our toolbox. Right click, hit paste. And this brings all our results in. So now we're going to go back to the instructions tab. We're going to refresh these two pivot tables. And this will give us a spot where we can go ahead and, and map our scenarios. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I guess it looks like by default these were all already accurate. All right. So now we're going to go over here and we're going to make sure that our reaches are mapped. Now it's important to have a total because we're going to the toolbox is going to always look for this total line as the total and it, we don't want it to add up all the stuff in each scenario and we only want one total so don't call this a different total this is our cities down here so what I'm going to do here is go to the drop down tab scroll over to the right and I'm going to add in my city name so I've got a couple shit cities Zanes. so that's just a few but you would go in and add all of them I'll go back to the instructions tab we'll map a couple of those So in this one, I've got two Zanesvilles, but I can merge them into the same Zanesville. All right. So once we've done that and we've mapped everything, we're going to click over here and refresh our pivot tables. Now, if your macros don't work, just click on the results pivot tab, refresh this one. Same thing on the reach pivot tab, refresh that one. Then we go back to our tables and everything should line up. So we've got a couple different things we can use here. We've got a filter so I can actually filter and show all these for just the 7 to 15 reach or another reach or even the city. Um, so you can go back to total to show them all. Uh, you can change the warning scenarios for the breach and the non-breach. As we go over here, we'll see our statistics tables. Same thing, we can change the warning scenarios up here. We can also change, uh, in both these tables now, we can change what it is that we're showing. So if I wanted to show the mean life loss instead of the median, I can do that. I could show the minimum or the maximum here instead of the 5%. And over here we can change things too. So we can show uh, we can show different statistics. We can go down and look at structure and content and vehicle damages and all these tabs. So this this gives you the ability to customize your tables as you need them.
Okay, so we also have the reach tables over here to the right, which by default are kind of set to be in the same order. You can do the same thing here. You can change these to all your different areas. Uh, so that gives you the table you need for the CTS worksheet. And we've also got an area tables tab. It's basically the same table, but this is more designed for your cities. So we would have the different cities so that we can see consequences by city. And then we go in our CTS worksheet, there's an H&H &H timing tab. We can ideally look at that. You can see when the arrival time, what the max depths are at a city, and now we can see the consequences of that city as well. Okay, so that's going to be the end of our video of looking at these life sim results and calibrating your model. I uh, hope it was helpful, uh, and good luck on your modeling.